if it's important for us to know this, then it's out there everywhere for you to see for yourself all the research shows. We are wired for compassion. We are designed for kindness. We breathe into that. I invite you to listen to the words of a book called Interior Castle, written by a woman who is known by the name of St. Teresa of Avila. The interior <coughs> castle, the soul seems to me to be like a castle made of a single diamond or a very clear crystal in which there are many rooms, just as in heaven there are many mansions. It is a great shame not to know who we are in these terms. We become like a person who has no idea who he is, who his father is, who her mother is, from what country she has come, we seldom consider what it means to be created in the image and likeness of God because all of our interest is centered in the rough setting of the diamond and in the outer wall of the castle. That is to say, we are very focused on our physical form. This castle, this interior castle, contains many mansions, above, below, at each side. And in the center, in the center, in the midst of them all, is the chiefest mansion, the most important room, where the most secret things pass between God and your soul. I invite you to breathe into this idea that within you there is a secret place. It has been called the secret place of the Most High. It is a place where the mysteries, the secrets, the holy awareness, the insights are passed between you and the one presence, between your soul and the one presence. Let's breathe into that idea. When we are feeling alone or without resources or without without the knowledge of the next right and perfect step. That's the moment when we pause and we breathe into this interior castle. The interior, deep, deep, deep in the center of us, where our soul is in constant communion with the one presence, the most high consciousness. most high consciousness to fill us and renew us and regenerate within us. The deep, deep commitment and willingness to surrender to this most high consciousness. This sweet place, this presence, this presence. 
presence that holds the healing balm <coughs> for the nations. The healing balm that soothes and restores our hearts and our minds. And from this place to take our steps and our actions. We speak out the names of those that we're holding in our hearts of prayer right now. Speak them out loud or at the whispering of your own heart. Kelly Payne. All world leaders, our human family, our global family, all cultures, all religions, all nations and villages and cities and towns, all the places around this globe where mothers and fathers are trying to figure out this morning how to feed the children. Mothers and fathers are contemplating what to tell the children, how to answer their questions. We deepen into the core of our being, the place of the most high consciousness. From this place, we hold our beloveds in prayer. We hold our world in prayer. All world leaders, all life, all life, all life the waters, the rainforest, the mountains, the soil, the oceans, the four legs, the winged ones, all of creation waiting for us to remember the most high consciousness. We take another deep breath for ourselves, for our global family, for our world. We touch our own hearts. And we say thank you for remembering. And we say so it is, and so we let it be. Namaste. <laughs> Yeah, I just heard a deep breath, and so let's all do one together. <laughs> so today we are talking about the world as a illusion. In my former life, when some of my strange and peculiar friends would come up to me and say, you know, it's all an illusion, I would go, are you nuts? <laughs> go back and read the book again. <laughs> and of course, the longer we live, the more we realize, we're making this stuff up. And we say that in a more professional way. <laughs> What we hold in mind, we are creating. Amen. Amen. Okay then. <laughs> so this is over. <laughs> okay, so we the message comes today from Deepak Chopra's book, The Third Jesus. We've been looking at the ten topics in that book that he said is the gospel of enlightenment, the ten topics that he saw that Jesus spoke about that would help us to wake up and to live in this most high consciousness place. And the one word he didn't put up there is practice. And how many of us feel like we're taking our practice to a whole new level? Yeah. I just needed to check that. So that's today. The world is illusion. Next week is meditation. And it's because Kyle Shiver is here. And the perfection of it all is I plug him in for the day for meditation. 
He has studied with Roy Eugene Davis, who, as you know, is a disciple of Paramahansa Yogananda. So Kyle knows a lot about meditation. He's bringing that message next Sunday, but today we want to talk about the world is illusion because here's the way, here's why we meditate. Here's why we go into silence. Here's why we go into prayer. You and I start believing that the worrisome things of the world is the reality of the world. And so we need to go into our practice, which hopefully by now includes prayer, silence, and meditation to help us unplug from the illusion of fear, the illusion of unkindness, the illusion of having enemies, and move into a higher reality. Okay, so Jesus taught about this. He taught about the importance of direct experience. Remember this? I've said it so much, y'all are going to say to me, could you please say something else? But here's the thing. Jesus had a very clear message. You know, he loved the priest, he loved the rabbis, he loved the holy teachers, but he kept actually saying, you know, you're going to need to get this within the interior place of your own soul. You're going to need to get this in the center core of your own being. When the days get hard, you might not be able to find a priest. You're going to need to be your own priest. You're going to need to be your own rabbi. You're going to need to be your own minister, your own therapist, your own healer. Amen. Why is this so important? Because people like Jesus said, you do all of these things that issue from the higher consciousness, you have to do this too. It can't just be a precious few. Um, mm. <laughs> so, some of you have heard this story, and if you've heard it, take a little nap. We'll be back with you in a minute. We're talking about the world of illusion, and I know that y'all never do this, but there is a phenomenon within the human family, among us adorable human beings, which is this, that sometimes we see something, or we think we see something, or we hear something, we think we hear something, we interpret, we make up a story, and then we start living out of that story, and you know, sometimes the story isn't true at all. <laughs> but we're living out of it. We're making decisions from a story that's not real except in one place, in our own head. Right? So I'm Driving home a few years ago from the church, back to Polly's Island, driving back to the town house, and everything's happening, and I'm feeling good. And I look over on the side of the road, and I see a dead black dog. Within a millisecond, I went into a righteous indignation. How could somebody just hit a dog and leave him on the side of the road? What's happened to people? Did they even stop to see if he needed to go to the vet? They could have at least done something. They could have stopped. They just left him there. <laughs> and what is wrong with people? I got a little closer, and I'm going to pull over and just see if there's any life left. I pull up to some black plastic garbage. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my little confession to you. Within a millisecond, I had judged, condemned, and sentenced the whole human race for not stopping for that poor black dead dog. <laughs> Well, they should stop for trash bags, too. <laughs> How can somebody leave all that trash? <laughs> so, don't we do that? Yeah. Yes. Don't we make up stories? And here's the funniest thing. Like, like the day, the night I had a dream that David wasn't listening to me, and I woke up angry and stayed angry the whole day. And that's the day David went to Health Point and worked out for a long, long time. <laughs> Go home when she comes to her senses. 
We make up stories that are not based in reality. Mm -hmm. Let's all take a deep breath. Who did what, who didn't do what, who said what, or who didn't say what? We make up stories. So I want just to invite us to consider this idea. Not every story in your head, possibly, not every story in your head is true. Mm -hmm. Possibly, there are some other pieces of information that may support you in opening up to a bigger picture. Could be. We have a, over 700 billion stories on this planet. And I doubt we're ever going to get all of our stories in alignment. <laughs> There is one place, as far as I can figure, there is one place where we can deepen into the one true story, and that's the center core of our being. If every religion will just go to its essence, will go to its, the essence of its true inspired teachings, not the interpretations, not the stories, not the many different groups that spring up out of every religion. Just go to the essence. Go to the essence of you. Go to the essence of me. Go to the essence of the core. That's the only way I can figure we are going to do the work of saving the world. Yeah. I might be wrong, though. That's my story. <laughs> That's my story. So there's another story I'd like to share with you. That was the black plastic bag story. <laughs> there's another story. Do y'all like to be read to? Because I have a story to read. Yes. 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 Carol Goddard, I, we quoted him in our book. This was the little book that preceded the big book. This was the practice book. <laughs> and I did this for Santa Barbara City College when I was teaching there. It's called Telling Our Sacred Stories, Powerful Pathways for Healing. Because the way we tell our stories is either healing or destroying. Yep. That's about as simple as I can see it. So, Harold Goddard says, The destiny of the world is determined less by the battles that are lost and won than by the stories it loves and believes in. There is a story about a man who lived in France in the late 1800s who was imprisoned for stealing food and during this crime, a storekeeper was killed. After many years of hard labor, the prisoner escaped and made his way to a farm where he hid for days in the old farm. The farmer's grandchildren discovered the convict in the hayloft, <coughs> asleep and dirty and cold. He awoke with the children quietly watching him have you ever had that happen? <laughs> yeah. He awoke to the children quietly watching him, and they were young and they were innocent. And when, when the convict did wake up, the children said, Tell us a story. <laughs> Isn't that what you say to convicts who are hiding out there? <laughs> That's what children ask of us. Tell us a story. What are the stories we're telling our children? What are the stories we're telling ourselves? So the convict only knew the stories that his grandmother had told him. Most of the stories were from the Bible. So each day, the children would bring food to the barn. They brought warm clothes and blankets, and always there would be stories. The children reasoned one day that this long-haired, bearded man who told so many Bible stories must be Jesus. So they asked the man to pray for their grandfather who was sick with fever and close to death. The convict, whom the children thought to be Jesus, 
knelt as his grandmother had taught him to do and lifted his eyes toward the sky and prayed. His countenance was lighted up and his voice was filled with peace. The next day, the children came to tell Jesus that their grandfather had recovered and was coming to the barn to meet the man of miracles who had prayed for him. If the farmer had seen the convict weeks before, he would have seen a much different man. The man living in the farmer's barn was now in clean clothes, rested after many years of hard labor, well fed, and at peace. Telling the stories to the children and being with them had healed a lifetime of pain. The children's belief about who he was transformed the man. As the old farmer beheld this man whom the children called Jesus, his eyes filled with tears, for he saw a face that was full of light and gentle. And falling to his knees, the farmer begged forgiveness of Jesus for a life lived without faith. The convict rested his hand on the farmer's head as he spoke these words, You are forgiven, my good and faithful servant. And when the farmer opened his eyes many minutes later, the man of God was gone and never seen again in this village. But the story continues, the story about the man who some say was Jesus, Jesus visited this village, and the children saw him. Let's take a deep breath. <coughs> oh, there are so many ways that we could go with this topic. The world is illusion, and when we see one another as the Christ, or as the beloved, or as the light of the world, when we see one another as someone who's made a commitment to keep their heart open even in the hardest times. We see one another, or do we see something else? We see What are we seeing in the people in the news? What are we seeing in our Muslim news? What are we seeing in the Muslim community? Are we seeing one aspect of people who've forgotten who they are and applying that to a whole group? Are we being more wise? Why if the children had only seen a dirty, hungry convict? <coughs> what if all we see in one another are the mistakes or the errors or the confusion of who we are? What if that's all we see? What if all we see is something done or left undone or said or left unsaid? What if that's all we see? Then you have, then you have the illusion that you're actually seeing, if you have not risen above that, what's going on now in this world. But if you're risen above, your vibrations have risen above that, and you can help think out of the box, see the big picture, see the forest, not just the tree, then you don't see that. Amen. <laughs> Let's take a deep breath. What are we seeing? Because what we're seeing is the story that we're going to tell. And the story that we tell is going to create the outcomes that we see in the world. Y'all may not believe this, but it is hard sometimes <laughs> to get up and give an inspiring message when so many of our hearts are just, oh. And you do a fabulous job. Well, there you are. <laughs> but I, I want to applaud that we're all doing a good job to even show up in the places where we show up. Amen. To even ponder these ideas and consider that there are ways to see what's happening in the world from God perspective or high consciousness perspective 
rather than getting caught in the drama of the sad, sad story. Yes. yes. Okay, we got through that. Okay, so <laughs> redemption. We talked about this last Sunday. Redemption. This is my new <coughs> definition for redemption. To see wholeness. <coughs> to see wholeness no matter what the event looks like. To see, in other words, to see God in everything. To see God in all of it. Well, how can God be in the mess in the world today? Because God is within us. And as far as I can tell, human beings have made the message, not God. Redemption, to see wholeness. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed. If I'm having a bad day, if I'm forgetting who I am, if I am in the <coughs> sorrows and cutting myself off from feeling the joys, then somebody like Kate will come in and say, I the light of the world. <laughs> or, or, put your finger on me. Put my finger on me and he's Let's all take deep breath. <laughs> We know what our choice points are. We talk about this a lot here. Can you imagine the choice point that Jesus felt? Or Mary? How many of us as mothers would be able to give our son over uh. to and, and bless him as he goes mm -mm. Mm -mm. into this event? Not a chance. What what must it feel like to be at that choice point? I told David, it's a good thing I didn't have children this lifetime because I would let him leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> the world as illusion. And all of us in this room are subject to believing the nightmare rather than the dream of and that's where our practice is. Here's another one. Things which matter most should never be at the mercy of things which matter the least. Ooh, that's a good one. I wish I could tell you I said that. <laughs> that's, this quote has been, many people have been given credit for it. Kind of like the reading you did at the beginning of the service. Marianne Williams, Marian Williams, Williamson. She wrote it, but for a long time, Nelson Mandela got credit for it. If somebody else is going to get credit for something you say, might as well be Nelson Mandela. <laughs> but this quote, things which matter most should never be at the mercy of things which matter the least. I urge us, as we are hearing world events and dealing with our own lives and moving through the days of miracles and wonder, that we remember this. What matters the most? What matters the most? <sighs> Even on days when I don't feel like being loving, I know that what matters the most is to dip into and tap into and move around in the reservoir of love that lives inside of me. Even most importantly on the days when I don't out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there's a field. I'll meet you there. We all know that. Yes. But look how it continues. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make any sense. Amen. Out beyond ideas of right and wrong, there's a field. That's that interior castle that Teresa 
uh, uh, St. Teresa of Avila talked about. That's the inner place of peace. That's the kingdom of heaven place Jesus talked about. That feel, let's meet there. Let's meet in that place. Because that place where the soul lies down in that grass. The world is so full, there's no words. Ideas, language, it doesn't make any sense anymore. I can't even feel self and other, it's all one. Mm -hmm. It is ironic to me that we quote Rumi so very much. Many of us have Rumi's poetry <laughs> books on our bedside tables. Rumi is a, was a Muslim. <laughs> he was a Sufi, which was the mystical arm of Islam. Our cultures, our faiths, our spiritual ideas are intertwined and enmeshed and wrapped up in each other. We can't get away from it. At the same time, our sense of having enemy and wanting to be angry at somebody for the mess in the world, we create our enemies in our minds. And yet, all the ones that we call enemy have something to teach us. Amen. Oh, couldn't we just send them out on an ark, like far, far away? No, we're all on the ark together. <laughs> we're all on the ark together. Can you imagine being on that ark? The monkeys get mad at the giraffes. The chimpanzees wreaking havoc, mayhem, and hoopla. Can you imagine being on that ark? One thing to keep the animals happy. What about the wives and the husbands? The children of Noah. Are we there yet? <laughs> How long do we have to stay in this boat? Take a deep breath. How long do we have to stay in this boat? This boat of consciousness that is killing spirit. How long do we stay in this boat of illusion? Of good people, bad people. Good guy, bad guy. How long do we stay in the boat of illusion that there's an enemy? For me, when I sense an enemy, I have to imagine that man or that woman as a child being held by a loving mother. Mm -hmm. I have to go back to where there was a moment of redeeming love. I want us to take a deep breath, and I want you to bring to mind anyone right now that you're thinking of as enemy. Anyone that you're thinking of as enemy. If it helps to close your eyes, do so. I'm not saying I've got all the answers and I've laid out an outline for world leaders to follow, but here's the one answer I know. See that in me as a baby. See that baby being held in the arms of a tender, loving mother. Whether that was the reality or not. Mm -hmm. See that enemy held as a baby, tenderly loved, tenderly adored, and told that they are the light of the world. Could be right now that your enemy is some figure in the news, or a politician, <coughs> or a world leader, or it might be somebody in your own neighborhood, in your own family. Just think of them. Now think of yourself right now. What if you're on somebody's enemy list? What if you're the one that somebody is seeing as an enemy? I want to invite you to see yourself as a baby, held right now by a tender, loving mother, told that you're the light of the world, held sweetly, tenderly, lovingly. Because that's truly who we all are. We came in as the light, and we're going to leave as the light. We came in as the light, we're going to leave as the light. I so agree with all of that. 
I have, and I have another vision. I work with people so often who weren't held as babies. Um, and that too, suffered terrible violence even as, as very small children. And often, you know, that is the root so mm -hmm. of the violence then that comes out of people. And so my vision when you said that was, because I saw that enemy as a baby abandoned, mm -hmm. or even um, done violence to, I pick up that child and mm -hmm. look in their eyes and say, you are the light of the world. Amen. And send love and embrace that person who is still that soul, who is still that person that came in the world, that needs my love, that redemption scene in this whole, um, and for myself as well. Amen. Another, both visions are powerful, just to know mm. I was saying a deep breath into that. Mm. What if you're the one to pick up the baby? What if you're the one to roll back the movie from enemy to baby? Pick up that baby. Mm. So let's take a deep breath. We may not have all the answers and the outline of the step-by-step -step to follow now to bring peace to the world. But this one step we know, we go to the interior castle of our own being. We go to the kingdom of heaven place that Jesus taught about. We go to the place called the Most High Consciousness. We go to the place of peace. And from that place, we pray for our enemies. We bless those that we see as enemies. From that place, we hold ourselves tenderly. And we remind ourselves, we are the light. We've come to be the light. I surrender to knowing how to be the light. And we say, so it is, and so we let it be. 